Well, howdy there, guys. This is your host, ID Jester. Thanks for checking out my video. I do appreciate it. Welcome back to the John Tiller software uh, video tutorial series. Uh, last episode, we talked about how to keep your headquarters in command and the process that's done behind the scenes for us. And just talked a little bit about strategy and uh, positioning of your headquarters and making sure they're in command range and and uh, all that good stuff. So if you uh, are familiar or unfamiliar with that episode, I would highly recommend you go check that out because uh, a lot of what we talked about in that episode is going to flow into this episode where we talk about these units that are disrupted and how do we get those units uh, to rally and get back uh, in the fight uh, as quickly and easily as possible. So what happens uh at the beginning of our turn uh, and what we're going to do is we're actually going to uh, I'm going to actually open this again so we can uh, we're at the end of turn 10 here turn 10 and what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, have the computer just process it again real quick so we can get our little command report and we can talk about uh, everything that's happening here that uh, shouldn't take but just a few seconds. You can see some of the combat results happening. Again, uh, sorry about the volume level in the first couple episodes. All right, so here's our command report. So, not good. I can tell already. Five out of our ten headquarters are out of command. So they broke down the chain of command for us really badly this turn. And that's not good. So five of our ten headquarters are out of command. Which means only two of our six units passed. Uh, they're... Uh, disruption or broken check and we're going to talk about that how that happens in this episode but you can see low percentage chance or low recovery is due to the fact that our headquarters a lot of our headquarters are out of command so definitely watch watch the headquarters and keep and keeping them in the command uh, episode of course dice are dice and they're going to you know sometimes have this i could run this simulation again and we get obviously totally different results but we'll deal with these situations right now. All right, so what happens is um, what had happened at the beginning of that turn before that command report came up is it rolled for all of our headquarters to find out whether or not they were in command. And then all of our broken or disrupted units are then going to get their own tests. Now, before I explain uh, that, let me give you one caveat. The one caveat is if you have a broken unit that is at maximum fatigue, and in the Panzer battles, the maximum fatigue is 150. So if a unit gets up to 150 fatigue and it's broken, it cannot rally. It doesn't get a rally attempt. You have to get the fatigue down so it's not maximum, and then it will get a test. So every unit that's disrupted or broken and not at maximum fatigue is going to get a range test to their headquarters. So whatever uh, headquarters it belongs to, and of course, if you're not sure, we can go and turn on the highlight uh, organization here. So when I click this headquarters, so this headquarters is involved with all of these units, even this one way up over here. So this unit, uh, if this unit up here was disrupted and it needs to make a range check, the closer they are to the headquarters, the better chance they have of making the range check. As we talked about previous episode, in this case, the headquarters range is 31 hexes. If I was at 31 hexes away, which is probably way up here, somewhere up there, is about a 50-50 chance that I pass my range check. So you can see that this unit's gonna have, you know, 60, 70, 75% chance of passing its range check, even though it's that far away, okay? So, I mean, you don't have to put these things right on top of your headquarters. That's not what we're talking about. We're just talking about keeping it in a, you know, 10 to 15 hex range away. It doesn't even have to be that close. And, of course, every uh, headquarters is going to be different. So, you want to, you know, check your headquarters and find out their different ranges because, uh, some of them are going to be different. We look at this headquarters over here. This is the Ox and Bucks headquarters. It's only got a range of 12 hexes. So at 12 hexes away, its units, which are these guys here, 
uh, would have a 50-50% chance. So, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So it was over here, they have a 50-50 chance. So if these units were disrupted and they would need to make a range check, they're only going to have maybe a 55 to 60, maybe 70% chance of passing that range check. So the first thing that happens is it's going to roll for all the headquarters to find out if they're in command or not in command. Okay? The second thing that's going to happen is all of your units that are disrupted are then going to make a range check to their headquarters. If they pass that test, if they pass the range test, then they automatically get a morale check. Okay? So we're testing our range to find out whether or not we get a morale check. If we pass the range check, then we automatically get a morale check. If we fail our range check, then another dice is rolled and you have a 50-50 chance of passing or failing. So if you fail your range check, half the time you won't even get a morale check. The other half of the time, you will. So if you fail your range check, half the time, 50-50, 50% chance you'll pass and you'll get a morale check, 50% of the time you won't. So getting those range checks to pass, obviously very, very important because if I pass my range check, then I automatically get a morale check. So how does a morale check work? Good you asked, glad you asked. Uh, the morale check is basically going to be a six-sided dice. There are six levels to your morale, A, B, C, D, E, and F. A is assigned to six, B is assigned to five, C a four, D a three, E a two, and F a one. A six-sided dice is rolled, and if it's equal to or less than your morale level, then you pass and you recover, you pass your morale check and you recover from your disruption. So let's look at, um, uh, let's view our, highlight our disrupted units, here we go. So let's look at this disrupted unit over here. This disrupted unit has a morale of C. A C is a four, okay? So the first thing it needs to do is it needs to pass its range check to its headquarters. If it passes the range check, then it automatically gets a roll to a, for morale. So it either, if it failed its range check to the headquarters, then it had a 50-50 chance of getting a morale check. So it could have failed the range check to the headquarters, even though it's very, very close. Uh, you know, it's probably maybe a 90% chance of getting that to pass. Uh, maybe it rolled 99, who knows? If it would have failed that range check, then it rolls another dice, and 50% of the time we pass, 50% of the time we failed, so maybe we failed that. It's hard to say. The other way it could have failed this is it might have passed the range check to the headquarters, but because this is a morale of C, it rolls a six-sided dice, and if it's four or less, it would pass. So it could have rolled a five or a six on the morale check, and it also would have failed, and so it could have failed you know, multiple different ways. We don't know what happened, but obviously it didn't pass its round check. So we've been talking about keeping those units again, and I hate to sound like a broken record because you guys are probably sick and tired of me saying it, but keeping those units with the best morale possible and keeping that fatigue level down, keeping, keeping babysitting your units and keeping them in good working order is ultra important for lots of reasons. We've, we've gone through episode after episode after episode showing you why it's so important. And I think, you know, I didn't understand this about John Taylor Games uh, for the longest time until I started really delving in and looking at the system and trying different scenarios and uh, watching what happens when the computer runs their turn and uh, keeping the fog of war off so I can actually, oh, what's this guy got? Here? Okay, uh, all right. Rereading the manual over and over. I've probably read each of the different manuals six or seven, maybe eight times. Uh, and it's taken me a while to comprehend all this stuff. So that's why I'm passing this video tutorials on to you guys. Is so I can kind of help you understand all the things it's taken me months and years and many many experiments to 
kind of figure out. So again, uh, disrupted unit, it's going to look at its headquarters, it's going to do a range check, pass the range check, what happens? Automatically gets a morale check. If it fails the range check, then if 50% of the time it will get a morale check, 50% of the time it won't. The morale check obviously is going to be based upon its morale, and uh, if you've got an A morale, then you're going to automatically pass because the 6 is going to be equal to or less than the 6. Uh, but you'll never have A because being disrupted lowers your morale by one level, so you're never going to get an A. <laughs> and that's for some strange reason you get a bonus somehow or whatever. But uh, let's say you got an F morale. An F morale, you got a 1 is equal to F. So on a six-sided dice, you need to roll 1, which is basically going to give you a 16% chance of getting a morale check passed. Uh, you know, if you had a D morale, that's a 50-50 chance. So, you know, you got to make a range check, you got to pass your range check, and then uh, if you fail the range check, you got a 50-50 chance, and then another 50-50 chance if you have a D morale. So, you got lots of things to cause you to fail. So, uh, keeping those units, uh, the headquarters in command, uh, keeping them, uh, keeping your, you know, again, you, you don't have to put your units right on top of your headquarters, okay? We're just talking about keeping them not, you know, scattered all over the map. You know, this guy, even though he's way up here, he's part of this headquarters. He's still well within the range of this headquarters. It is uh, this headquarters actually has a range of, uh, oops, got to click on the headquarters first. Uh -huh. uh, that's not the headquarters, Kirk. Uh, let's try again. There we go. The headquarters here has got a range of uh, 31 hexes. Uh, yeah, plenty, you know, way, way out here. So, you know, you don't have to put them right on top of your headquarters. Just keep your headquarters, you know, close enough that, you know, you're going to give them a 60 or 70 or 80% chance to pass these range checks. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, if you got 70 and 80% as opposed to 40s and 50s percent chance, you're going to pass a lot more of those range checks. If you pass those range checks, then you automatically get a morale check. If you don't, then only half the time you are. Last thing we need to talk about is uh, headquarters that are disrupted. If the headquarters disrupted, um, you need you only get a uh, morale check at your uh, morale level, but you only get 50% of that value if the headquarters is out of command so keeping those headquarters again in command are going to allow you to get better chance for your units to rally and recuperate if your headquarters are always out of command your units are always going to be disrupted you're going to not play well and the computer is going to beat you you're going to get mad and frustrated with the system you're going to uninstall the game and say well this game's stupid i don't like it when you don't understand the concepts that are happening behind the scenes. Keeping your headquarters in command, uh, which, you know, we did, uh, I forget what that said, uh, how many were in or out of command on this, uh, this go around. And obviously, you know, we can uh, open this scenario again, and we're gonna get totally different results because, you know, random dice rolls. Uh, make sure the AI is on fast processing. We're gonna just advance to the next turn here as I talk. Uh, so your headquarters disrupted, what's going to end up happening is all those units that it's involved with uh, are going to fail, or they're going to have 50% less chance of passing their test. So, you know, you take your D uh, check, uh, and all of a sudden you take your D check, and normally you have a 50-50 chance of passing a D. Well, if your headquarters is disrupted, then all of a sudden you got a 25% chance because you only get half that value. If you have an F morale, you normally have a 16.666% chance. We only get half of that. So you're going to have 8.3333% chance of passing that test. So you can see how everything uh, works together. So we ran this scenario again. Six of our 10 headquarters is out of command. One unit of our six passed. So you can see more headquarters have failed less chance of your units recovering okay and normally what ends up happening if we look at our headquarters here uh, what ends up happening as we talked about in the uh, headquarters section is your uh, supreme headquarters on the map which is in charge of everything 
uh, organization. So when I highlight him, you see I got everything on the map. Uh, if it fails, it's check that all the headquarters underneath it that fail aren't going to get their double check. They're not going to get another check. And so they're going to fail their tests as well. And then when they fail their tests, what ends up happening? All your disrupted units are going to fail their tests. So usually when you got bad results for your headquarters, a lot of them out of command, uh, it's disrupted out of command. This guy's out of command over here. Uh, when your headquarters fail their tests, units are not going to recuperate and they're not going to rally and they're not going to get these extra tests. And it's going to be super hard to, uh, yeah, this, this headquarters now out of command. This unit didn't pass this test. So it's still disrupted uh, because the headquarters uh, is out of command. So all kinds of bad things. When the hierarchy uh, of, you know, that's why I spent time actually going over and looking at when we did the headquarters. You know, uh, this is the 6th Airborne Division. Which, which headquarters are under that? Uh, understanding the hierarchy of your units with the headquarters because the headquarters are going to determine whether or not those units it is uh, in charge of are going to be, you know, that's your fighting force, whether or not they're going to re recuperate and rally. Uh, this guy's, you know, this guy is going to be no good to me this turn. I got to get him out of there. Uh, you know, uh, he's going to be in big trouble. Um, you know, so, you know, I got to move him out of there, which is going to weaken my force against all these Germans that are starting to move out, trying to keep me from their point. So there's a lot to the gaming system. And I'm just trying to show you, uh, you know, things to think about. Uh, you know, you don't have to be an expert uh, to understand this, but to understand the basic concepts. I want to keep my headquarters. Uh, hopefully they'll roll well and they'll, you know, obviously this guy here failed his 90% chance when it fails and everything around it fails. And that's kind of just like normal war, you know, and that's, that's what's simulated so well in this system is when this starts failing and the headquarters start failing and when the headquarters start failing, the units that are like calling back to the headquarters, they're going to start failing and they're going to stay disrupted and, and the chain of command breaks down. So, uh, hopefully between last episode where we showed and talked about headquarters and this episode where we talk about disrupted units and broken units uh, and how they rally back. Hopefully you got a better uh, understanding of how everything happens behind the scenes and uh, what you can kind of do to uh, help out. Obviously, you know, we've got a good setup here. Uh, we just happen to get unlucky with a lot of the dice rolls and that's going to happen. That's that's what dice do. Uh, they'll fail you at the worst time, uh, and they'll uh, hopefully uh, make up for it uh, when you're in dire straits, right? So that's that's the goal. But uh, you will play the best as you can uh, to the best of your abilities by understanding the core concepts of you know keeping our keeping our headquarters in command, keeping our units uh, with the highest morale level we can keep them at. So they're not taking penalties from high fatigue, which is lowering their morale level, which is going to make their uh, their morale checks harder to pass, et cetera, et cetera. So it all works together in one big happy package. And everything that we talked about pretty much transfers from this game system to Panzer uh, campaigns, to First for a World War I campaigns, the Napoleonic series. A lot of everything that we've talked about translates. Now, some of the numbers might be different because of the, uh, the you know, the amount of uh, units in the, on a counter and the and the distance in the hexes. So all that might be different than what we talked about. But the core concepts will stay and remain the same. Keep your units and good working order will help you uh, function better as an army and be able to get your uh, units to do what they uh, you know what what you ask them to do and uh, hopefully uh, we'll give you more enjoyment with the uh, John Tiller uh, battle system so appreciate everyone's thoughts comments suggestions if you have any be sure to leave it in the uh, comment section here on YouTube I do read all my posts and I usually try to reply back so I do appreciate everyone that has done that and continue to do that and we'll see you guys in the next episode thanks so much for watching I do appreciate it 
and uh, take care until next time.